So when I first started grad school, I was looking at metathesis of alpha olivins, or metathesis of olivins. And about three months in the project, I was like, what is an olivin? I keep hearing people say this was, it's an alkene. So olivin is the trade name of alkenes, and it's really obnoxious because it still permeates organic chemistry, even though it's not really what we call them. Now, in this video, we're going to talk about a specific type of olefin, olefin, particularly an alpha olefin. So, it is an alpha alkene. What does that mean? Well, if we were to start on the end of the branch, and we were to start numbering, giving them letters instead of numbers, because, A, if you're going to completely ignore what we normally do, get rid of the numbers, an alpha olefin is one where we have a terminal alkene. It is an alkene sitting at the end of the chain. And these are actually very special in terms of alkenes because if we have something that's unlike the beta or gamma position here, they become less reactive. So an alpha olefin is unique in that it is more reactive than your typical alkene. And this just has to do with the fact that the double bond here appears in the compound. Now the other unique property of these is that as we start making substitutions on this gamma position, so the carbon that's next to the double bond, it will become more and more reactive. And part of this is sterics, and just part of this is the electronics of the compound. So, alpha olefins here are unique. If we have a choice between reacting something, let's say I drew this out more, reacting this double bond versus this non-double bond in an unconjugated alkene, this is actually going to be the one that reacts first. And this is something to keep in mind when you start doing your synthetic schemes, is that if you end up with a terminal alkene, or even a terminal alkyne, this is going to be the most reactive part of the molecule, not one of the double bonds that falls within the compound itself. 